Hi, I'm Tori, and today I'm going to be reviewing When Women Ruled the World by Kara Cooney. I listened to the audiobook narrated by the author. This book tells the stories of six different women who ruled Egypt, either as queens or pharaohs or regents. They all ruled in different ways, but they ruled Egypt and had significant power in some capacity. The book goes in chronological order and covers the stories of Mernaith, Nefru Sobek, Hatshepsut, Nefertiti, Tawasrat, and Cleopatra. I thought this book was really interesting. It had a lot of good information that I didn't know. I knew almost nothing about Egyptian history going into this book, so I learned a lot about Egyptian history and also a lot about these female rulers. I didn't always love the writing style of this book or agree with all of the author's opinions, but it was definitely a very good jumping off point to kind of learn a little bit about some of the different female rulers of Egypt. And also to just kind of get a sense of what Egyptian culture was like, what it was like for a person to rule Egypt. So I learned a lot of really fascinating things. You know, Egypt is famous for having a pharaoh die and then hundreds of people were sent to his tomb. Either they were killed there or they died in the tomb with him to accompany him to the afterlife. And that is something that's talked about a lot in movies and books and things like that. And apparently that only happened early on in Egypt's history at some of the like very beginning dynasties. And it pretty quickly faded and for most of Egypt's history that wasn't something that was practiced. Ancient Egypt is also fairly famous for its incestuous marriages, and I was expecting that going in, but I was still surprised by how common it was not only for brothers and sisters to marry each other, but for fathers and daughters to marry each other, for a man to marry his sister, have a daughter with that sister, and then marry the daughter. It was amazing how much incest there was in ancient Egyptian royalty, and I don't believe that was practiced widely throughout, like the whole, um, populace, you know, the more common people wouldn't have practiced it as much, but it was believed to be a way to kind of consolidate power, and you don't have to worry about in-laws when you're marrying someone who's in your family, so I guess there's that. I also thought it was really interesting how kind of flexible the Egyptian ruling system was, because I'm used to more European things, where there's the king or the queen, and then you follow their descendants, and the next person becomes the king or the queen, but the Egyptian system was a lot more flexible. You had children becoming the rulers fairly often, at least in the stories that I read about, and when that happens you have a regent who is making all the decisions and guiding that person. But you can also have lots of different combinations. You can have multiple pharaohs at once, you can have co-rulers who aren't related to each other in any way, they're not spouses or a parent and child, they're just two people who decided to rule together. You could have a regent declare herself to be the pharaoh, and the younger pharaoh who's a child isn't not the pharaoh, you just have multiple pharaohs at a time. And so I thought that system was really interesting. Reading this book also made me realize just how long ago ancient Egyptian history was. I live in America, we talk about the founding of our country in the 1700s, like it was a really long time ago. And even talking about European history, you go back to 1066, which was so long ago. But some of this history is 4,000 years old, and it's amazing how much we don't know and how much we do know. You know, we have to guess so much based on just the statues and the monuments that are left, and it really made me aware of how miraculous it is that we know the things that we do. And because this history is so old, we don't actually know all that much about it, and I think any book about Egypt has to do a lot of guessing and give a lot of their information as it seems likely that this happened and we're guessing that maybe this happened. And so I definitely want to read more books about Egypt and see how different authors handle it. I didn't love the way that Kara Cooney handled it. She did still acknowledge that a lot of what she was doing was guesswork, and she would begin a lot of her statements with, it is likely that, or we could suppose that, it seems probable that, which is good that she was acknowledging that, but then she would present the information she gave with such certainty, and I didn't know where that certainty was coming from. She spent a lot of time talking about what the different female rulers would have thought and felt, and she gave a lot of them different personality traits, and I didn't really see where she got that information from. Maybe she had good reasons, um, like historical reasons to support that, but she didn't share those reasons with the reader, and we just kind of had to trust her, and so it felt like she just picked arbitrary personality types for each ruler based on what she wanted or what she would have identified with, and that kind of removed me from the book a little bit and made me very skeptical about the things she said. It also felt like the book had a very uneven tone. Kara Cooney is definitely very strongly feminist, she definitely supports women, 
and admires female rulers, but I felt like she didn't always express that in the best way or present the facts in the best way. She would point out that we only have six women ruling in about 2,000 years of Egyptian history, and that women only got to rule when there was no other option, there was no one else to take control, um, it was usually at the end of a dynasty, there were no more male heirs, the females were the only ones left, or the woman had somehow managed to swoop in and steal power, but that was much more rare. Usually it was just that there was no one else to take charge. And she would talk about how sexist Egyptian society was and how downtrodden women were. And then she would switch to talking about how the Egyptians knew how important women were and that they chose female rulers in times of need and that maybe our society could stand to learn from the Egyptians who valued women so highly. And those felt like very contradictory statements to me. And I couldn't quite figure out why she was bouncing back and forth so much between saying that ancient Egyptian society was so empowering to women and respected women so much and saying that it didn't respect women at all and gave them the absolute minimum amount of power that it could. I also don't think this book will age very well. It talks a lot about current events that are happening now. I believe it was published around 2018. And for a book about ancient Egypt, it spends a lot of time talking about the election between Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton, especially in the introduction. But that kind of thing will come up throughout the book, and she talks about our modern political battles quite a lot without really saying very much about it. And I also got really tired of hearing her talk about the patriarchy and the patriarchal society. And if you were the kind of person who wanted to make up drinking games, that would be a good drinking game for this book. Every time she uses the word patriarchy, take a shot. And then I also felt like the author wasn't very good at looking at history from the perspective of the people who lived it. She would talk about ancient Egyptian religious ceremonies and how they were designed to optimize power, and that definitely is a valid point. Very often religious ceremonies do end up serving political purposes and do end up furthering the people in power. But they're also religious, and people also do them because they believe in those things. And she didn't even seem to consider that people would have been participating in these religious ceremonies because they wanted to honor their gods. She made it sound like they had crafted these religious ceremonies for political reasons only, and that religion never crossed their minds while they were designing this. And even though ancient Egyptian religion is died out, and it's not really practiced anymore, it still felt pretty disrespectful to these people who lived for thousands of years to just dismiss their religious beliefs as if they didn't believe in them at all and it was all just for show. She also kind of did the same thing when she would talk about incestuous relationships. She made it sound like every single person in ancient Egypt who made the choice to have an incestuous marriage did it with the full knowledge that they would create unhealthy offspring. And it is true that over time, this was 2,000 years, people probably did notice that their children were less healthy when they were born from incestuous marriages, but they also didn't have our modern technology, and not everyone would have known that as soon or as absolutely as we do. And she didn't make any allowances for things that they might not have known. She talked about these ancient people like they had the exact same mindset that we do, and it was so strange that they made these decisions when she was looking at it like they were time travelers who had gone back from our time and decided to operate in history exactly the way we would have, and not like they had different beliefs and opinions than we do. And she didn't acknowledge that these people who lived 4,000 years ago might have looked at the world differently than we do, wouldn't have had the same medical knowledge that we do, would have had different religious beliefs than we do, and would have just approached life in a different way than we do. So I had mixed feelings about this book. I felt like it had some very useful information and I did learn some fascinating things about Egyptian rulers, but I also felt like the information could have been presented in a better way. I felt like the author didn't do very much to acknowledge her own biases and didn't spend a lot of time trying to look at Egyptian society from the perspective of ancient Egyptians. So it was a little hard to get through this book, but I am glad I read it because now I do know a bit more about Egyptian history, and I definitely want to pick up other books about ancient Egypt written by different authors and kind of get a different person's opinion on it and see what conclusions other people draw with the same information.